So, um, uh, so welcome everybody, and um, thank you to uh, ATIPI um, for inviting us uh, to, to join this conference. Um, it's the first time that we've attended uh, ATIPI, and it's um, a strange time <laughs> uh, to be doing so. So, um, uh, and thank you to Christian and the team for um, for helping ensure that we've had a smooth uh, and technologically seamless start uh, to this session. Um, so uh, uh, Barbara, as you can see, is, is tuning in from Sydney. Uh, Christian is moderating from uh, Newcastle, and I'm here just outside of Barcelona in Spain for the conference being hosted in the USA. So there we have a good <laughs> transcontinental lineup. Um, uh, my name's Sam. I'm the, I, I don't know, I don't really have a job title, so I've started calling myself executive producer at Better Letters. Um, everything that I and we do is um, is about the traditional and contemporary crafts of, uh, of sign painting, sign writing, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we do that through events and workshops and projects, publications, and as we're going to learn today, films. Um, the I just want to tell a little bit of the um, the backstory of, of how we got here today, uh, which is that um, in 2016 I received an email uh, connected to my other line of work, which is ghost signed, as you can see uh, on the left there. And tomorrow I'm giving um, a presentation uh, all about ghost. Tomorrow that's Saturday, depending on uh, your time zone. <laughs> you have to be careful saying tomorrow and yesterday and so on. But uh, it's Saturday. I'm giving a talk uh, all about stories of ghost signs around the world. And a woman contacted me in 2016 saying, was I aware of this uh, ghost sign for Rally and Honda Cycles? Um, because she was a carer for an elderly gentleman, uh, 96 years old, who had painted it in the 1950s. And uh, for me, it was, it was quite a revelation to, to have a connection between one of these old fading signs and the living person that produced it. And that set in chain a, a series of events that led to us uh, going out to Bristol in the west of England and meeting Cliff, as you can see pictured, and making a short documentary about him and his life as a sign painter. Uh, sadly, uh, a few months after we uh, filmed, uh, Cliff died um, and he never actually got to see uh, the film that we made about him. Um, we, uh, we we were really happy with it, uh, with the film, and uh, I'm going to post a link actually in here where you can see this uh, and the other films that I'm about to mention. Um, they're all freely available online. Uh, but we thought it would have been a fun project, and why not uh, do another one? So the next one we made uh, was about Joseph Samuel. Um, he is a, a sign painter, gilding uh, expert, and um, all-round credible person and, uh, and place. And uh, we made a documentary about him. He was a fourth, fourth generation sign painter. His uh, great grandfather had founded the business in the late, what we would call the late Victorian era, um, in the heyday of, uh, of Vienna's um, crafts and arts. Uh, um, Hours. And uh, so he, he was uh, he was our next uh, documentary, um, and he runs also a, a fantastic sign painting museum in Vienna. So when restrictions are lifted and we're allowed to move around again, please do uh, go to visit that museum. Um, and then uh, we just released this film uh, earlier this year online about Stan Wilkinson, who was for many years the sign painter at Carter's Steam Fair. And he told the story of, uh, of getting into the trade in the 50s. And uh, he technically, he's retired, but he still uh, wields a brush uh, from time to time when, uh, when called upon. Um, so these, uh, these were the first three films. And they're obviously um, uh, uh, you know, about European uh, and well, actually all male, in fact. Um, but I had been working with, uh, with Barbara. We've done a, a few workshops together. Um, hung out at Letterhead's events, and um, she's um, a show card and ticket writer predominantly, uh, but has dabbled in all kinds of sign work um, from Sydney, Australia. And I thought it'd be wonderful to uh, to make a film about her and her life, and uh, that's what we'll see today. Uh, just to 
uh, give credit to um, uh, Carla Hackett, who was the, you know, although I'm credited as, as having a production role, I have to be honest that uh, Carla, Barbara and, uh, and Lewis, um, the director, really did the legwork uh, in Australia to bring this film together. And uh, it, it's doing quite well at the film festival, so we're really happy with, um, with that. Uh, I'm not going to say too much about Barbara because the film is there to tell her story, uh, but we'll have some time afterwards for a um, for, for some questions to her. Um, and then lastly, I just want to give uh, big thanks to uh, Colossal Media um, in New York and Rightway Signs of Chicago. Uh, these two uh, large sign painting firms have um, have really helped to make the, all of these films, except the first one, all of these films possible um, through through generous support. So, um, so just to, to give a, a plug to our sponsors um, and uh, and thank you, Colossal, and thank you, Right Way. It's always a pleasure uh, to bring these films to a wider audience. So, um, uh, I guess should we, um, Christian and Barbara, should we turn our microphones and videos off while we show the film or yes yes it... that's the best way to go so yeah thanks yeah. very much sam for the introduction and yeah. for the kindness of being here so early in the morning for you yeah. to, <laughs> to join us in this session so yeah be, while you get the film ready so i think yeah, the tech guys can help us out to put that on the screen and uh yeah for those that know me uh, know me well that know that i'm brazilian and i've been here in australia for a few years and for me, it was one of the pleasures of uh, being connected to the Australian typographic community was to get to know Barbara in a conference that's called Typism, that we both uh, were speakers in, I think it was two years ago, right, Barbara? Yeah, two years yeah, ago. Two years ago, yeah. So it was really good to see uh, her work. And uh, and then, of course, it's good to see this being expanded by being by making like a proper film. So I really thanks them for that. The more experienced you got, the faster you got. The faster you got, the style of lettering became very personal and had character. Sadly, it was temporary work. It was uh, sale, a lot of sale work, so it was here today, gone tomorrow, and another, another sale next week. Well, I didn't like school uh, because uh, it was distracting to me. I, I was most of the time I spent outside the classroom on detention, talking too much. I left school at 14 and 10 months, and my mother said, "If you're going to leave school at that age, you have to go and do a TAFE course." It was called show card and ticket writing. Uh, I'd never heard of it, had no idea what it was about, but it turns out it was all about lettering. And um, I, I, I learnt Roman lettering. I learnt block lettering which now called Helvetica, uh, and I learnt the beautiful copper plate script lettering, all with a brush and with a nib and pen. So the word ticket writing now prefers to the more on-trend word of calligraphy. I really wanted to do something artistic and creative, and creating lettering really did it for me. And as far as sitting there day after day, year after year, I never, ever, ever felt like it was work. My mother's reaction when I told her I was moving to Melbourne was, you're just going down there to get on drugs. <laughs> oh, wish you could. couldn't have been further from the truth. <laughs> My dad came with me to help me get accommodation and then I started, I started work at Maya Melbourne. It was pretty, pretty exciting. The, the studio was set up so that there was a high continuous easel, on, like it was kind of set up like that. So all, a lot of guys on this side and a lot of guys on that side. And they used to talk to each other. They stood up and they'd be doing all the signage. And then, the, then, then there were three calligraphers that sat at a desk and they did all the small signs, like jewellery signs, uh, and that's where my desk was. But I used to get up and go around to where all the big signs were being done and, and admire. As far as learning, well, they did teach me some drinking skills <laughs> Friday nights. But um, apart from that, they 
you know, I just learnt so much. They, they were masters of the day and um, particularly one calligrapher, he was so good and, uh, you know, he, I really loved the way he worked with his nib and ink and, and um, worked very small. When I decided to leave Maya and move back to Sydney, they all, um, uh, one guy designed a beautiful card and they all signed it and it was a caricature on the front and some just absolutely beautiful calligraphy inside. And yeah, it was a pretty sad day really because in that short time, you know, I'd learnt so much. My job situation then was looking for places that were hiring ticket riders. Uh, these department stores back then were big. They were big department stores and the, and the bigger the department store, the more ticket riders they had. I was working at, at, at the store that I'd come back to. One of the managers said that they needed an urgent sign for the window. So I was riding long, sh long sleeve shirts, $3.99 and I'd left the R out of shirts. And it went from me to the, to the um, display guy to the window dresser and it, was, it wasn't until a lady passing by, a customer came in and said, <laughs> pointed it out. I nearly got the sack over that. <laughs> When I first saw machines in the ticket writing department at Grace Brothers Roselands, I, was, I wasn't all that worried because they were just doing very um, formal uh, pr numbers, price, price points. As time went on, I could see that the machines were doing more and more and a lot of the ticket writers that were ticket writers, hand letterers, were now working machines. And I thought, well, I don't want to be one of those. Developing a style, if you're a ticket writer and you're developing your style, it's very, very individual. No two ticket writers would be the same. And it got to the stage back in the days when uh, my colleagues and peers, I could recognise their style. I could see uh, their work and say, well, that's Anne's or that's Leonie's or whatever. My particular style, I think, um, um, was perfected with, with the speed. And so the faster I got, the freer I got, I guess, and I, I think that's where, where my style became well known. Uh, when I met Paul, I was working at um, Grace Brothers Roselands, and we got married, and in 1974, we, we had our daughter. I decided to, to start my own business at Macquarie Centre. I was a new mum, and the jobs were coming in. I had um, April in a bouncer net, bouncing the, the, the bouncer net with the right hand and ticket writing and sign writing with the left. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was good. When we were getting a lot of screen printing work to do, Paul actually really loved it. He was, before that, he was a bookkeeper and accountant, but he really embraced it. And for the simple reason that when he did the screen printing, he could look at, at a, at a poster and say well I did that and, and and that's where the creative part which I believe is in all of us um, surfaced for Paul. We'd have our business meetings in the bath and we'd have wine and champagne if it was a good month we'd have champagne. <laughs> New South Wales State Library. This is where all the work all my work and all the Ticket Writers Club work is archived. Oh, and here's Pearson's Florist. Oh, they were a major client of ours. Look at this one. This is a, a style called Anxio, and it's done with a chiselled brush. This has been shadowed, and this is done with pen, a round tip nib. This is one of the brochures that the Ticket Writing Club produced, desperately trying to promote our hand skill and to keep it alive and people would, um, we have what issues are important to you to keep signs, tickets done by hand. We were, <laughs> we were trying to compete with the computer generation here. We thought we had hope. We didn't think that, um, you know, the vinyl lettering would completely take over. It was evident that people were producing signs 
desktop publishing and producing signs and the letters were all, the fonts were all Roman and Helvetica. Everything was very um, basic and, and formal and it was on trend to have a sign done like that. So I started to write like that. I started to sign write the show cards in fonts and the casual and the freehand lettering kind of went by the wayside then. For 30 years we ran our, our business, uh, starting off under the name of Barbara Sign Shop and then going to Silverwater Signs. We sold the business in 2011 and he was um, happily retired um, and yeah, sadly he passed away from cancer four years ago this January. Not too many couples. <laughs> Not too many couples can run a business and a marriage together. Uh, and, and now we're all looking for ways of keeping the skill alive. When I discovered that there were people that wanted to learn uh, the skill that I had, I was absolutely thrilled. People want to learn to do things with their hands again. And the thing that excited me most of all was that I now had an opportunity to not let this skill die. And I'm passing on this skill to all sorts of people all over the world that just are in awe of it. And I just, I'm just so amazed that, you know, they find it such a, a wonderful thing to learn because for me, it's kind of second nature. And to, to be able to pass it on is, is um, just so exciting. And I love going around everywhere, teaching everybody. All right, so we are back on. <laughs> oh, I'm just so amazed that <laughs> we did that, Sam and, and Lewis and Carla. <laughs> Fabulous. Yes. Uh, I'm glad the way you, you edited the video, they have like one minute or two to dry the tears. So <laughs> you can, <laughs> can join, join back into the yeah. room. Yeah. But yeah, but it's such an amazing story. So I, I'm so Thank glad you. that we had the chance to, to get to, to people from outside Australia to get to know this. And I think also she has influenced so many people here in Australia. So that kind of whole generation of uh, people that are really keen to do lettering. And, as, as a profession. So yeah, I'd like to thank Barbara for that in front of others. Well, I have to thank Sam, Carla and, and Lewis because um, if it wasn't for that team, it wouldn't have happened. And, and, and as I said in the, in the video, I'm just so thrilled that it can be passed on because it was, I thought that was the end of it. So um, I'm delighted, absolutely delighted. And I'll, I'm happy to go anywhere. <laughs> teacher <laughs> yeah. all right yeah so i wonder if you do have any question in there i haven't seen in the chat so far so yeah if you do please please bring it in do you, do you want to say anything um Barbara? you sort of touch on it um towards the end of the film but maybe um a little bit more about how uh you and carla came to know each other and and what you've done together um since that time yeah, look, that's, 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 that's just an amazing um, opportunity that presented itself. I was I was in Melbourne and my son-in-law said to me, um, hey, my mate's girlfriend uh, is a graphic designer and uh, she's just gone into business for herself and she's focusing on hand lettering. 
And uh, I only had that afternoon free. So I said, oh, okay, I'll, I'll go to her studio and meet her. Well, the minute we met, we just clicked because we're both left-handed. <laughs> and um, and Carla was just amazed at, at the way I could, you know, just um, very quickly use. I always carry a, a calligraphy pen with me and, and uh, I just held the the pen in my left hand and, and of course she said whoa <laughs> so we um she said to me would you mind if I came to Sydney and would you give me some private lessons so I said that's fine so she came up to Sydney and I ran a, a workshop with her and the, and the guy that uh, bought our business he wanted to to get back into some hand lettering and then um she went back to Melbourne and um a couple of weeks later rang me and said would you be interested in coming down here to run a workshop with me there's a lot of people that would like to learn this and that's how it all started in 2013 and um we had we've had workshops all over the place since then but mainly in melbourne for a year and then uh then we met you sam which we kind of feel is our agent <laughs> and so we well, yeah we've had um, a couple in london um paris couple in Paris um yeah we've um we're still we're still happily going but money is good yeah so that's how we met and um and you because of Carla I think that um you know the whole of the whole scene lettering scene in Melbourne and Sydney has been revived Was, it's interesting that you um you, so you you teamed up in uh in 2013 and it was around that time that the um the film sign painters came out and and we saw not def, not directly as a result of that film but i think the film had a big part to play but the, the big rise in the interest in in traditional sign painting and that's still um you know going very strongly I, I've always been interested in what was happening around that time that, that might have triggered this, this resurgence and interest and, uh, and efforts to revive these traditional skills. Well, I think um, the revival of these traditional skills is due because in the mid 90s, when our business was um, going, you know, technological. Um, and it was and it was on trend, you know, like desktop publishing. Everybody wanted to make their own wedding invitations. Everybody wanted to do their own point of sale signage. But after a while, I mean, it just all looked the same. People got sick of it. The the vinyl lettering was falling off um, buildings and off cars, and and everybody started to to say, well, how was it? How was it done originally? And I think the the whole industry of hand sign writing and, and hand lettering um, was acknowledged and recognised for what it was. Uh, and, you know, like back when I was uh, working for these department stores, nobody thought for me who, who did the signs in the window, who did the beautiful show cards that were placed all around um, the centres or, or the shopping centres or wherever. Nobody gave it a thought. But 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 now um, now that uh, people are realising that it was all hand done, it's yeah it's become very well done, and the, and the likes of Letterhead and, um, and the sign the sign writers that movie yes I think they've played a big part in it. All right. Very interesting, Barbara. Uh, I would like to make another question about now during lockdown, people like pretty much like with COVID situation. Uh, probably, as I said in the video, about the business point of view, that how hard it is to maintain a business. So you've been there trying to keep it up with business, and now you're facing this world pandemic. Do you have any tips for people that are trying struggling with at the, at the present time and see maybe bring those things that you faced in the past as, as a way to go forward 
Well, that's that's a great question because it is, it is hard in, in these um, un, unknown times that we've never experienced before. But in business, I sort of feel that, um, you know, we had our ups and downs and quiet months and, and that's when you have to um, reinvent yourself diversify and look at what else you can do to add value to whatever, whatever it is that is your business. So we, um, Carla and I put together an online course, which in these COVID times is, is doing quite well. We have increased in sales. That online course is um, a 12 part video uh, and we're now in these COVID times have thought about putting together a manual, our own manual to go with with that course. So we're we're in, in the middle of, of doing that now. Yeah. So yeah, I think um, you'd have to kind of like a lot of restaurants here. I don't know about where you are, Sam, but a lot of restaurants here were converted to takeaway, and that yep. they su survive yep. in COVID times. Yeah. And they all needed signs to advertise <laughs> their takeaway service, but they all did it on a on a computer and just printed A4 sheets and stuck them yeah. right to the windows. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, yeah, I like the, the ones um, they say that yes, we are open. You know, that you have to put on, on the windshield pretty big. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, you you mentioned that um, Barbara letterheads because it's, it's 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 interesting, isn't it? That here we are at a um, predominantly typography conference. Although I've seen a lot of calligraphy here um, over these these few days, there's also then the much more technical side um, of of type design on computers and, and the web. Um, do you want to say anything about like what letterhead is in your you know, from your experience? Oh, what Letterheads is, is wonderful. It's, a, it's bringing together like-minded people that share, share the, the love of lettering and, and, and all the different um, techniques that, that hand lettering offers. So what, what I'm so thrilled about is the Letterheads meetings that I've been to um, up until a few years ago, um, my skill wasn't really represented much. Uh, calligraphy was, but brush lettering uh, wasn't. Sign writing was. So I'm really excited that the Porto one and, and other ones that I've been to uh, are now happy to have uh, my skill, uh, you know, in there as well. And that's, that's how it's going to be preserved, by people knowing that it, that it is a very different skill to sign writing. It's all freehand and it's... it's um, it's mainly on paper and cardboard, which is sadly why not you don't see a lot of it around in the um, in the like the traditional signage on buildings and things. That's wonderful to, to see those hand done signs there, but sadly with cardboard and paper signs, they look like that. I mean, it's good, you know. We see in the film. Um, some examples that uh, are kept in uh, in the archives there, and uh, I think those you know those are just going to increase in interest and value over time. Um, but yeah, like you say, it's, it's ephemeral work, isn't it? And it, it, it disappears with the promotions. Absolutely, and um, the the idea of um, when I sold when we sold the business, and the idea of chucking out all those long done show cards off the got to go somewhere had no idea where they were going to go but I did a lot of research and found that the, the New South Wales State Library was interested and um, their field manager came out and to my studio and I had a, a, a girlfriend with me who was who was a ticket writer she used to work with me and she was there saying don't give them those photos don't give them that keep back keep back <laughs> but then I, I, I think they've got a really good Selection of um, of what we did, we used to do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you talk about the work being, you know, largely freehand. But I mean, what what processes do you follow, if any, for you know, especially some of those larger pieces for, for setting out? How how do you practically go about that part of the process? Oh, that's a great question too, Sam. Because in um, setting out and doing layout. 
um, it was all part of that Joe Card and Ticket Writing course, a major part of that Joe Card and Ticket Writing course. And we had layout rules and we had um, balancing um, techniques and how, how to lay things out where you would need to make uh, certain things pop or certain things uh, stand out over and above something else. And there were so many different ways you could do that, whether it's with colour or grouping or the, the, the style, the fonts, whatever. So, yeah, it was um, um, you, one technique was that you could cut out bits of paper and arrange it all around on, on your on your on your work or you can simply rule a center line and start balancing uh, down the page off that but the main thing about um, show card writing is 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 a balance of groups of text if there's a lot of text you, you need it to be legible you need it to be on it so that it's not going to need to work so layout is, is very very important and it's a visual thing you 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 learn to um, correct it visually. There's no measuring. There's not really any measuring. Like in sign writing, you have to make sure you've got your your math right. <laughs> not 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 with um, this skill because it's 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 visual and it has to have impact because you've only got a few seconds to catch somebody's eye walking past a window. So you know it's it's less is more. Um. You, you talked, uh, you know, about the TAFE course. So, what, what, what? When did I, I presume it's not available now? But do, do you know when roughly that happened? And and this, are there any TAFE courses available for people that want to learn any of these these skills? Sadly, there are no TAFE courses where you can learn these skills. Back in my day, in the sixties, late sixties, is when I completed my course. It was three years that I went. Um, Three, two nights a week for three hours each night. I worked in the day to pay for the course at, to go to at night and I was lucky enough to get a job at, at the end of the course. But um, as time went by with TAFE colleges, uh, particularly in trades, unless there's a, uh, a good job account at the end, um, they take the course away. So because of um, the few and far between jobs that were available as time went on, they just got rid of it. So it, I actually think that um, this part of this course should be in the beginning of um, other courses like graphic design courses or, and I know um, Dominique in um, Queensland she she works for she works for Griffith University, and she she encourages her students before they do anything on the computer to make something, create something, write something by hand. And I think that you know I, I really think that this course could be the show card and ticket writing course. Elements of the show card and ticket writing course could be factored into some other courses that are uh, available now. I'm, not quite sure which ones, but surely, you know, you need to go back and have a look how things were once done to go forward. Yeah. Workshops, yeah. our workshops, our online course. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I think, you know, it's um, something I'm fascinated in and something that we always ask, uh, you know, the people in our interviews is, is about how they, how they learned and um, you know, lots of people have been lucky enough to follow uh, an apprenticeship model. Others have been able to attend, um, you know, very structured uh, technical courses like yourself. Uh, but it feels that today, particularly for these skills, there's an absence of those opportunities, or they're extremely limited and very geographically centred. And um, and given the demand and interest, it's it's a real shame that. You know, in, in that sign painters film, when you buy the DVD one, they have this you know extra stuff that didn't make it into the film, and they're going around the Butera School in I think Boston, and basically the guys at that school are just talking about closing down. They're showing the rooms. Oh, this is where we used to do such and such, and it's it's just on that that point of them closing, and you sort of feel saddened by the fact that if they somehow could have kept going for another 12 months yeah. 
for the film yeah. to come out, they would have seen their subscriptions uh, rise up again. So yeah. it's um, very unfortunate. Yeah, but uh, you know, I, I honestly feel that they should be looking at putting it in somewhere in the courses that are available now. Maybe just the layout part, or or um, the um, the just basic brush lettering, learning to do that with your hands, and then moving moving on. Yeah. Nice, Barbara. I have a question to you as well. Considering this thing about, as we said, uh, how important it is to have in a in a, in a shop people to like so some something to offer for restaurants and so, so get the prices and any any other information that you get in there. That how do you see now that do you think that people are gonna change the perception over it to look at handcrafted signs that now we spend more time on on the like uh, interacting with, essentially with screen devices because you're so getting so tired of the computer or anything yeah. that related to that. I think you're losing a little bit of the human touch. Yeah. So do you think people are now gonna look at this differently? I hope so because uh, we. Uh, the skill of show card and ticket writing is that we, by the time you've turned on your computer, I've already done three or four signs. <laughs> so that's the skill, the speed. You build up speed, and you and you can um, you can give it a, a lot of character and a, and a lot of today. Um Whereas the computer, I don't can do that. In yeah, I had hope, I hope people are looking at it uh, again and, and thinking they uh, would like to learn it. Shop owners, small businesses, you know, if they just came to, uh, well, we actually, Carla and I did have a, uh, a small business owner in Melbourne at one of our workshops and they, they it was a coffee shop. And, yeah, they were keen to learn how to do quick, fast signs, advertising, whatever they were having on special for the day or special copies yeah yeah no, i think there's a market there i'd love to see them in melbourne particularly melbourne really really embrace it whereas um sydney's not so much but yeah maybe COVID times is changing everybody <laughs> yeah how about in newcastle do they do you see a lot of hand done signs there christian I think yeah, they usually they have this small that small billboard. I don't know how you call the one that's like a plaque that it goes like a diagonal thing that they just put uh, in front of the the store. Oh, a sandwich board. Yeah, they, we do have a lot of those in here, mm -hmm. and I think yeah, and uh, they still have those. So by now, I wonder how the yeah, I wonder if it's going to increase that as time goes because I, I I've been noticing that a lot that people just say we are still open. You know, yes. let's say you're, yeah. you're open for business. Uh, yeah, even if, even if it's only by delivery, but they they still they still need to to advertise that. I think now more than ever. Yeah, but yeah. I think yeah, we 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 haven't we have seen more people doing that. I think lately, and mm. and I hope we continue on that because again, I think we need a little bit more of human interaction, and and I think it might come through a a a, new, a really nice crafted sign. Yes. Yes. Well, um, they have um, the, the instant sign shop. Uh, I think that's where people just think if they need a sign, they think about going to those instant sign shops and they, you know, print out things. So the, the challenge I think we have for people to recognise the handcraft of the hand and the hand -crafted. is that where do we, where do we, how do we market ourselves? to the average person because way back, as I said, in, in my day, people didn't even really think about who did the signs that were in the window. So that's the biggest challenge, letting people know that they, we, we can still do these things, we can still do these hand-done hand signs. Although I, I just did a job for um, a young couple that were getting married in the Hunter Valley in, in the wine region uh, here in um, um, Sydney, and it was... Uh, an outdoor wedding and they had they bought me big pieces of plywood that they'd um, coated and you know I had several messages to write on it and they were going to be placing them around the the vineyard and they wanted script you know the flourishing script style so yeah it's and and that came to me by somebody knowing oh I know Barbara can do stuff like that so yeah I don't know how you get people to <laughs> 
to um, you know to seek out people that do do hand signs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Barbara, I think we'll we'll um, we'll, uh, we'll start wrapping up. But okay. if um, there is, uh, it, it's optional. But there is a um, uh, this place called the Hangout Room, oh, uh, which, is, which is part of the conference. So when you um, if you leave this room but sort of stay in the conference uh, page, okay. uh, you can go in there and uh, I don't know there may be people in there uh, hanging out. So it's a bit more like a, it's a bit more like this, but with lots of video screens. Oh, okay. Uh, that everyone can be on. Uh, and on where, where do I where do I go for that? Um, I guess Christian, is it? Yeah, you just click on the. If you go back to the main lobby, or or you on the goals when you have see the agenda on the top. You probably see. I think the first item that you see over there is the hang hangout room, oh, it's just okay. as any other uh, speaking yeah. room. So you just click on that, and then you'll be directed to that uh, hangout room. Uh, yeah, I can assist you with that if you need. So uh, yeah, we, we've been doing that over the last few few days. It's been a good way to continue the conversation, and especially because I know we've been talking a lot about human interactions, and then here through the chat, sometimes you don't get that much because people. Yeah. They might be willing to chat rather than just make a proper question. So oh, okay. yeah. it has been happening over the last few days. People just go back there to the hangout room and continue the conversation or choose a different topic, whatever it is. So it's yeah. been another <laughs> way to get connected. Okay. Well, I really have to thank you all for inviting me in and, and um, telling my story and showing that film. Thank you so much. Yeah. And right. thank you, Christian, for helping with all the tech. <laughs> Yeah, we are in this together. <laughs> Actually, Christian, do you want to stay in here to look at the thing that you said was going on with my my microphone? Yeah, Just probably. I uh, think it's better probably we talk to tech guys to see in a different room because otherwise we'll keep recording this one. Ah, okay. And then people watch it later on, both of us talking about something else. <laughs> and what would, would you send me an email? Yes. Later, an email that will invite me to yeah. a private to do that okay yeah okay. all right so yeah i would like to thank very much for everybody that participated on this on this session and mm -hmm. also yeah for barbara for presenting and showing her story and sam for for, for the mm -hmm. kindness of participating on this as well and also for for sharing her story a story for, for 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 more people so yeah we we feel if you're willing go go to the hangout room to continue the conversation I uh, can watch this later on again. Keep in contact with Barbara. She's a really lovely person. Oh, thank yeah, please, you. please get in contact with her. Yeah. And yes, you know, again, thanks very much. And uh, I'll see you maybe in the next session. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye. So, yeah. Thank everybody for coming. <laughs>